Welcome to this video series on how to use a Zoom H5 recorder. Today we're going to focus on the basics on how to record an acoustic instrument and uh, I'm going to be talking about how to, you know, kind of turn it on and how to set the gain as well as where exactly do we need to place the recorder to get the best sound quality. Uh, so we're going to go through a bunch of uh, experiments where I put it like two feet away from me and ten feet away from me and somewhere in between and we'll together figure out what sounds best. My name is Mateusz and on this channel I'm bringing you the best tips, tools and advice on how to become a better violinist. I also do product reviews so actually the products we are talking about today there are links in the show description below so you, at any time you can just click them and uh, check them out and also don't forget subscribing so now let's move on with the show here is our shiny new zoom h5 recorder first we need to make sure that our sd card is in the machine we need to record onto something right then we slide and hold the power button to turn it on. Let me walk you through all the details on the screen. Here we can see how much remaining recording time we have left, the name of the microphone capsule that is attached, the XY5, the battery indicator and the file and folder name of our current recording. The moving lines represent the recording levels. And at the bottom here we have a description of our current recording format. How do we start the recording process? First, we need to select the microphone. So you do that by pressing the buttons here, left and right, they come on together if you just hit one of them. If you take a look right now at those sliders, you see when I strike one or the other microphone, the bars are moving representing the volume of a corresponding channel. In order to start the recording process, we need to set up the sensitivity of microphones, otherwise known as gain. If I move the dial down, it will make the microphone less sensitive, therefore quieter. Now, if I turn it up, those red blinking lights are showing us that we are clipping the sound and make us think that something crawled inside our speaker and died in there. Okay, it's time to start the recording. The gain is set. All we need to do right now is to press the record button. Hello, hello, testing, one, two, one, two, three. Now, if you're happy with your recording, then all you have to do is just press the record button again to stop it, the recording's being written to the card, and you can feel like a professional audio engineer. How do we play back what we just recorded? It's very simple. You just press that play button right here and check this out. We have a nice nifty speaker on the back of the Zoom H5. Now you can hear how the gain will change the volume of my voice. I'm trying to speak exactly in the same way. You can also use this uh, headphone jack here and you have a volume control for the playback right there. If you have more than one recording, in this case I have three, you can cycle through the recordings using these arrows right here, back and forth, or press the menu button. That will get you to the option project then using the little joystick you select that and that will show you where your recordings are. If you bought a gigantic SD card and would like to change the recording format to get a higher quality, you can do that by going to menu, uh, then we go to recording options, recording format, and you can see that we can get all the way to 48 kilohertz at 24 bit resolution. To select that option, we just simply press the joystick. Here we see the selected sound setting. We press menu to get back to our original screen. And you can see at the bottom right here, there is your current sound settings. Time to do some testing. So for this next segment, I would strongly suggest that you grab a pair of headphones so you'll be able to tell the difference when I'm moving the microphone around. Bye. <laughs> 
was quite interesting. So, when I play fortissimo on the G string, on the violin, what I hear is that in a very close proximity, I'm getting a little bit too much surface noise and too much string attack noise. I can hear the bow friction on the string. So I would say that uh, moving it just a little bit farther away, probably four or five feet, clears up the sound. But then we're starting to pick up acoustic from the room. Uh, my room is actually pretty good because it has a carpet here, you have some books, and um, I think it's quite pleasing sound. When I move the microphone about 10 feet away or so, then I'm starting to get like a weird halo effect in this acoustic. So I think that's a no-go. Um, I would imagine that if you wanted to do some post-production, adding reverb and so on and so forth, uh, probably the point between two to four feet, uh, that distance would give us the best sound quality for this particular excerpt. Anyway, uh, what do you guys think? Let me know. Please just throw a comment in there or advice. Uh, I'm quite new to the whole audio experiments. You know, normally I just play, right? So, and now I think it would be a good idea to try something softer uh, and, uh, you know, not just full out playing and see how the color of the sound changes uh, with messing with the distances on those microphones. Well, with this piece, I like the farthest setting of the microphone the best. I don't know. In this particular room, for this particular piece, that sounds the best to me if I'm not going to do any post-processing. So, uh, again, let me guys know what you think. Please consider liking and subscribing to this video. And I will see you later.